we begin with another case. And that's the one that Republicans have drummed up against President Joe Biden's only living son. For years, the right wing has been running a sketchy, tawdry political operation to find and prosecute any wrongdoing by the president's son, Hunter Biden. And the president's son has, of course, as we all know, made some very bad judgment calls over the years, largely, I think, related to his lifelong struggle with addiction. But he has been targeted in what is essentially a political hit job intended to inflict pain upon his father. He's facing criminal charges by a special prosecutor in the Department of Justice that many experts say would never be brought against anyone who is not the son of the president. Now, some of the most serious claims leveled against Hunter Biden have to do with his work for a Ukrainian energy company called Burisma and alleged payments they made to the Bidens, plural. You see, Republicans have been yelling from the rooftops about Burisma and alleged bribes paid not only to Hunter Biden, but to Joe Biden, to the man himself, the president of the United States who was then vice president. That idea of illicit, secret, seven-figure bribes to the man who's currently president has been the central point of their whole attack. And today, in the most spectacular embarrassment imaginable, it blew up in their faces. You see, the special counsel, Republican appointee, leading the case against Hunter Biden, who was appointed by Donald Trump, now says that that guy, this informant they hung their entire claim on about the bribe, he lied. Their infamous FBI informant is being federally criminally charged for making it all up. Documented allegations of bribery from a trusted FBI confidential human source has now finally been released. Now its contents are devastating. Okay, I am sparing you the amount of Sean Hannity I could play you. For my sins, I watched about 30 minutes of monologues. But in his show, Fox host Sean Hannity alone promoted the claim of this single FBI informant no less than 85 times last year. 28 of those segments were monologues, very long monologues, in addition to all the breathless so-called reporting. And this is across the right-wing media. Hannity had House Oversight Committee Chairman and Chief Biden Crime Family Investigator James Comer on as a guest 43 times in 2023. Today, James Comer and Sean Hannity's favorite informant, the smoking gun for their investigation, was arrested at Harry Reid International Airport in Las Vegas. He was indicted on two counts of feeding the FBI false information about President Joe Biden and his son Hunter. According to that indictment, 43-year-old Alexander Smirnov's story about Burisma officials paying the Bidens millions, quote, was a fabrication, fabrication, an amalgam of otherwise unremarkable business meetings and context. Congressman Jamie Raskin's a Democrat of Maryland. He is actually the ranking member on the House Oversight Committee, which has been investigating these claims. In a statement tonight, he said, quote, I formally call on Speaker Johnson, Chairman Comer, and House Republicans to stop promoting this nonsense and end their doomed impeachment inquiry. Congressman Raskin joins me now. Is this the end of the road for this line of investigation, Congressman? Well, I certainly hope so. Um, the members of the committee on the Democratic side have seen these fraudulent allegations debunked time and time again. Uh, Lev Parnas wrote a letter to Chairman Comer to me uh, he was uh, Rudy Giuliani's right-hand man. He said, I was sent out there to concoct this case. There's nothing to it. We've seen the testimony of Devin Archer completely uh, debunking it. The former president of Ukraine, Poroshenko, uh, debunked it. Um, the Republicans on the Senate side in 2020 did their own investigation and said they couldn't find anything to it. So we're not that surprised uh, that this has happened, but it is an amazing turn of events. And I do think it's an opportunity for a reset on the Republican side. We could use the oversight powers of Congress to be looking at the problem of gun violence, for example, or we could be looking at climate change, or if they want to stick with this issue, let's look at the question of presidents and their families selling out the government of the United States. We did a minority report of our own. We released it uh, over a, a month ago now. Chris, I think I came on to talk about yep. it. We found in documented receipts nearly $8 million that Donald Trump 
collected at his hotels and golf courses from China, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, lots of countries. We could really look at the whole question of foreign government emoluments in a bipartisan way. And we could even look at the question of other family members using their names in order to make deals with foreign governments. Fine. Let's look at that, too. But let's be serious about it and let's deal with the facts rigorously rather than in mythological ways. One of the things that I think is, is key to highlight here, and I just want to lay it out and you tell me if I, I have this right, is that it's always been the case, right, that Hunter Biden's work for Burisma was documented, right? That was absolutely, we know that happened. We know the payments were made to him, et cetera. They've never, and, 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 and Hunter Biden had a business consulting with various entities. The thing they've never been able to demonstrate, and I think because it didn't happen, is connecting it to Joe Biden, to the president of the United States, to the man who's actually the sitting president who they want to impeach. The reason they lean so heavily on this now, it appears, fabricated allegation is because the only thing out there anywhere that made that leap. In fact, several Sean Hannity monologues talk at length about this, right? This is the one. This is the thing that connects it to Joe Biden. That's why this is so important. Well, Jim Jordan said it is the key allegation in the whole constellation of allegations. Um, Chairman Comer was on TV yesterday talking about it. Um, they clearly view it as the heart of the whole investigation. Uh, already they're starting to backpedal and say, oh, it wasn't really about Burisma in Ukraine. Well, then what was it about? Nobody can determine what it was about. Uh, Mike Johnson, in endorsing the impeachment inquiry, went right to the Burisma allegation. So this really is the heart of it. I think it's an opportunity for them to say, you know what? We gave it our best shot, but we're going to give up the ghost. There's nothing there. Even Donald Trump's handpicked special counsel, Mr. Weiss, has now brought charges against this confidential human informant who turns out presumably, allegedly, to have been engaged in a fraud from the very beginning. And that's what we have said, because there's simply no other evidence that's ever supported it. So on the question of impeachment, um, which is, it was always the case. I mean, Donald Trump is very, very public. He wants Joe Biden to be impeached. I think if he were to face criminal trial this year, which I think is, is likely, uh, it, they would like to impeach Joe Biden around that time to essentially have kind of counter-programming. That's my supposition. Now, they need a full vote of the House to do that. They just impeached Alejandro Mayorkas over what was clearly a policy dispute with no even allegation of a high crime or misdemeanor. But it took them two tries. They failed on the first vote. They succeeded by one vote the second time. Subsequent to that, a new Democrat has been elected in the 3rd Congressional District in New York. Their majority is now 219 to 213. It means they can only lose two votes on anything if it's a party line vote. It seems to me like it's dead. But I, I mean, maybe I'm getting out of health with myself, but I don't think they're going to be able to impeach the president, not just because they have nothing, but now they also don't have the votes. Well, that's right. Um, and, you know, they um, when you say that Mayorkas was impeached over a policy dispute, the policy dispute was they did not want Mayorkas working with the Senate Republicans, yes. and Democrats to actually solve problems at the border. That was the, yes, dispute. That was the dispute. They yes. wanted to keep the border crisis alive for Donald Trump's candidacy. But look, they were never going to be able to impeach Joe Biden because you've got 15 or so. Uh, so-called Biden Republicans who uh, represent districts that went for Joe Biden, even though they're represented by Republicans. And those guys don't want to go anywhere near the fantasy production of this um, fake impeachment drive. And so it was never going to happen. The uh, impeachment of Mayorkas was just this little trinket of a consolation prize yes. that they got instead. And that also blew up in their face. And so, you know, one might hope that they would say to themselves, let's give up all of the nonsense, the impeachments and expulsions and censures and all of that. Let's get back to work and try to make something happen. But unfortunately, Donald Trump, the fourth branch of government, vetoes it every time, where the fifth branch of government, uh, Vladimir Putin, vetoes it. So they can't help the people in Ukraine. Putin doesn't well, want it. They can't solve the problem at the border with Democrats because Trump doesn't want it. Well, and Mike Johnson right now doesn't have the votes to bring anything to the floor or control the House whatsoever. It, it, it's, com it's complete failed state in the House of Representatives right now. Congressman Jamie Raskin, thank you very much.